again, Mark here from TalkingBass.net. This is the third lesson devoted to harmonics on the bass. If you've not been over to TalkingBass.net, then check it out. There's a load of different lessons devoted to every part of bass playing, and if you subscribe, you'll receive the free scale reference manual and a whole bunch of other free goodies, along with uh, updates on new uh, weekly lesson releases. So we've covered all the natural harmonics from the open string fundamental. Um, all these harmonics on the G string are harmonics of the G note. So they're all harmonics of that fundamental G. But if we were to change the tuning of the string, obviously all those harmonics would change relative to that open, uh, open pitch. So those, those harmonics would go down to... You know, we've got a, a, a whole new set of harmonic notes when we change the tuning. But we don't have to be limited to these basic natural harmonics of the open string. We can also use a wide variety of techniques for getting other harmonics. And when we build harmonics from notes other than the open string, uh, string <laughs> they're called false harmonics. So the most logical way to create a different set of harmonics on a string is probably the least used and is actually the toughest on your hands, um, as you'll see. So um, because we've got this set of harmonics from the open string there, you know, it's midway along, we've got the uh, first harmonic and then, you know, these different sets of harmonics. Um, if we were to fret, let's say the A flat there, the first fret, we would then have the same set of harmonics along the string, but they would all be one fret higher because we fretted that. So the, the A flat becomes our open string, just as uh, happens when you use a capo on a guitar or even on a bass. So we've got the first fret there, and then let's say that we take a, a third fret harmonic. So that's at the third fret of the open G string. If we fret the A flat there, we'll need to play the harmonic at the fourth fret. So all the fret, all the harmonics move one fret uh, further up. Um, so again, third fret harmonic there from the open string. If we um, fret the A flat, you can hear that harmonic there at the fourth fret. So it went from the third fret. Okay, so you can see how it can create these huge stretches, even for these these uh, um, quite high harmonics here. So there we've got the first finger taking the A flat, and the fourth finger is stretching up to get the fourth fret there, right over. And you really have to be careful how you pick. You have to pick quite lightly, otherwise it can uh, cause problems. You get a lot of noise. Okay. Unfortunately, as you can see, this method of using the fretting hand alone in creating these false harmonics is really, really limited. Most of the decent sounding natural harmonics are quite far from the open string, and you'd need massive dinosaur hands to stretch that far from a fretted note. But these higher harmonics are, are possible, and you do hear them occasionally. Um, Portrait of Tracy uh, by Jacob Pistorius that I keep mentioning in the other lessons um, uses this technique and he uses it quite early on to get a, quite a tough uh, note in there. So um, the note is, uh, well you use a fretted B there, second fret of the A string, and he stretches up with the fourth finger to uh, roughly the sixth fret there to get this E flat. Now, it's quite tough down there, but if we take it further up, you can get a, a good idea of what this pattern is, and you can use it um, quite well. So if let's take an E up here, so this is uh, ninth fret of the G string, and then you want to look for a major third pattern on, the, on that same string. And that's easy to do by just seeing two whole steps. So E, F sharp, G sharp. Okay, and there it is, that's the, that's the major third. So in seeing that pattern, you want to see those two whole steps there. So that's E to G sharp. So if you, once you see that pattern, you can then play the harmonic at that major third distance. And it just so happens that that harmonic is a major third from the fretted note, but a couple of octaves higher. So if we were to play the, uh, that A flat, the G sharp there, That is actually that that note, just two octaves higher. So once you've nailed it there, you can move it around. And obviously, as you move further down the neck, it becomes a lot tougher to play. But up here, it's, it's not too bad. And the, uh, around that area, there are a whole bunch of other, of other uh, harmonics. If you stretch up further and get to the perfect fourth, you've got that note there. 
then you can come down so you can actually get those little arpeggios that you had up there okay so again we're just using the fourth finger to pick out these harmonics and if you really want to get any of the large stretches if you take that you can use the thumb to fret the note so if I uh, fret the note there at the G string we've got the whole set of harmonics there available to us so we can get a much bigger stretch from the thumb to the uh, to the fourth finger I can't really get right up there but you can you can certainly pick out these ones here Although that might be impractical if you're going from one thing to another fairly quickly, but it's just a uh, just a technique to experiment with. Okay. So now let's have a look at pinch harmonics. Now these are, uh, are created by taking the same concept as we've just run through by fretting a note and then creating harmonics off that note. Uh, but we use the picking hand to fret the harmonic instead of the fourth finger there. So as an example, if I fret this G uh, here, 12th fret of the, uh, of the G string, and then you know, try and hit one of those harmonics there with the fourth finger, instead of making that large stretch, I can just fret the note there and use the thumb of this hand instead of the fourth finger to hold the harmonic and then just pinch that there, well, pick it with the remaining fingers of this hand. Okay? and that can be applied to any part of the string. So it would be much more difficult, obviously, to try and, well, you wouldn't be able to <laughs> stretch that far up, but now using the thumb, we can extend up to get these much higher harmonics. So as a first example to try out, let's uh, first go back to the open G string, okay? So we can play the octave harmonic here at the 12th fret, simply there. Um, and then if we fret the A flat, the first finger, it would take, you know, a thumb and a fishing line to reach up to that 13th fret there. You know, so that was where that harmonic was. If I fret the A flat, there is just no way I can fret that 13th fret there for that first harmonic with the fourth finger. So I can use the thumb here to get that harmonic, okay? The action of playing a uh, pinched harmonic can take a while to get uh, used to. Um, so first of all, we'll just try a really, really simple one, just a, an octave uh, from the open string. So it's that harmonic that we'd normally play just with the first finger there. And what I want you to do is take the, f uh, the thumb and then place it on the side of the, uh, of the string there, just as if we were holding the thumb down uh, as an anchor for picking. But we're going to put it on the G string, and then use one of these other fingers, the second finger, oh, sorry, the first finger, second finger, third finger, any will do, to just pick the string. Okay, so we'll try the first finger. Now at first you'll notice that that's quite muted, but we are getting the harmonic. So it's not, you know, coming out as much as that, but you know, if you just hold the thumb there, just hold it there on the side lightly, you don't want to really, you don't want to mute it that much, you just lightly hold it there with just the same pressure that you would with the normal harmonics, and then just pluck with the first finger there. Once you've nailed that and you know that you're getting some kind of heart muted harmonic, just take the thumb off, okay? And that should give you a little bit more sustain, okay? So once you've nailed that first uh, harmonic from the open string, we'll try from a fretted note. So um, because uh, different people will have different amounts of frets on a bass, uh, we'll go for one that I know that everybody will have, and that's a C. So if you take the C there, fifth fret of the G string, and then we try to play the pinched harmonic up here at the 17th fret. So it's the C, we're going for the C, the octave above. So this is easy to find if you've got fret markers because you'll usually have C at the second fret marker, third possibly if you've got you know one on the first fret, but uh, you take the C there, look for the second fret marker past the 12th fret, and there it is. So, you know, that's if you don't know the notes on your neck very well. If you know them, it's just that C. So we look for the C there at the octave, put the thumb there, and we can get that harmonic, okay? So the thumb lightly on the string, and then pluck with the first finger. And like I say, you can pluck with the second finger as well, the third finger, sometimes depending on the position, uh, you can uh, get a better harmonic by picking with something like the third finger, even though it might seem a little bit odd at first, but uh, there. So that's the 
that's the heart, that's the octave. So then what you want to do is just try getting those octave harmonics you know, at different places. Now, the higher you go, the, e the better they'll usually sound. So if uh, I was to play the G there, um, the 12th fret of the, of the G string, because I've got 24 frets, I can just uh, fret a harmonic at that 24th fret, okay? And again, there's the, harmon the uh, octave harmonic. If you haven't got 24 frets, you've just got to try and find it. And I have the same problem if I'm going up for the A, B, C, D, E. You, you just have to find the positions there on the bass. But for now, just try getting that. You'll get used to the sound of the octave harmonics because they ring out the loudest, okay? Okay. So as a little tip for finding these harmonics beyond the fretboard, um, I tend to, uh, I mean this is just me, but I tend to find uh, different waypoints along there uh, just to remind me. So first of all, that I mean it's easy on here with the 24th fret bass because I've obviously got the 24th fret that relates to the G there. So if I want a G, I can get it there at the 24th fret. If I was to go for the C here, I know that that C is on the edge of this pickup, the first pickup there, the, uh, the neck pickup. So I know that that gives me the C. I know that the D, if I was to play that, is halfway along, so around that screw there. Uh, the E there is on this edge of the neck pickup. And I know that the G there is around where the screw is on the next part of that neck pickup there. So I've got all these little uh, reminders of where they are. So there's the G, E, D, C, and then in between the 24th fret and the pickup, I know I've got the A somewhere roughly there, then the B just before the pickup. So I can, I can relate those to the pickup and the neck. So So once you've got an idea of where these harmonics are beyond the fretboard, uh, just as a little exercise, just try playing a chromatic, uh, the chromatic notes up from the 12th fret up to the top of your fretboard, however many frets you've got, and then just try picking out those harmonics as you go. So there's the G, then go up. You know, and just try and get the harmonics to really ring out. As another exercise, you can try playing scales. So you could take a C major scale. So if I know where the C is there, I can then work up uh, with the octave harmonics. Then try exercises within them. Or I could try a D major scale, starting there. just anything at all that you would normally play just try picking it out with with the harmonics there once you've nailed those first harmonics for each of these uh, fretted notes so getting the octave um, you can start to look for all the other harmonics and just experiment with uh, with getting them so you get the root uh, the octave the um, the fifth the two octaves third you know and all those ones two uh, three octaves above all those ones and they're all closer to the bridge as you work up so if I fretted that G there I've got that octave there got two octaves there all these small little harmonics here the closer you get in there to that bridge they're a lot harder to get out and you have to pick them a lot harder but and that's all off one fretted note there which can be quite handy if you're just on one note there and you want to get fifths and octaves there because these harmonics become quite difficult to play as you get closer to the bridge there, it's, um, it's worth remembering that you can use the, uh, the bridge pickup to bring them out a little bit more using uh, a, bit, a bit of a boost in the mids, the upper mids, uh, compression and distortion, all those little tips and tricks uh, to just get those harmonics to ring out. People like Billy Sheehan, um, he'll, he'll use distortion, compression and really get screaming harmonics out. And if you've heard any rock guitarists, you'll hear those screaming harmonics that they get by using a bit of EQ and distortion. One cool thing about pinched harmonics is that you can uh, actually be a little bit more expressive with them by putting vibrato on and sliding them, which is something that's a lot harder to do with the natural harmonics. So if we played that natural harmonic there, you know, it's just a harmonic ringing out, but, I mean, you, you can bend the neck to get a little bit of vibrato, but it's uh, not very, 
not a very safe and controlled way of doing it. Whereas with these harmonics up here, you can really put on some nice bits of vibrato. So, and you can slide them too. so you can be a lot more expressive with them. You can also outline chords, so if I was playing that C major 7 there, C, E, B, if I can get these nice chords there and even add vibrato to that. Yeah. So quite limitless what you can do with harmonics once you start using these pinched harmonics and uh, as I've said before much much better than trying to stretch with the uh, the uh, fourth finger there if you want to hear a good recorded example of these type of harmonics then just give the song Birdland a listen by uh, Weather Report and that's Jaco Pistorius there uh, uh, using them on the intro that's from the album Heavy Weather and um, the riff sounds a little like this So he's using pinched harmonics there just to create this little melody. And uh, again, there you can see you can be a little bit more expressive with them by putting bends in. Okay. Next lesson, we'll finish up this short series. Uh, we're taking a look at tapped harmonics. Uh, if you've not been over to TalkingBass.net, then uh, be sure to check it out. Subscribe to receive updates on all the new lessons. I release one roughly each week, so look out for that. Also, like this video and leave a comment if it's helped. And also, subscribe to the channel and check out all the other videos that are available. Remember, I also give Skype lessons, so just get in touch if you're interested for a more personalised tuition experience. Okay, see you later!